Why did I come out so early? Well, let me tell you. I was away at a wedding enjoying myself. Happened to be 70.3 Worlds weekend. And I knew there was a race occurring. I woke up to take a pee. And I knew the race was on and I made the massive mistake of checking the tracker. And I saw, I think it was 3 a.m. or something, I saw, oh, big group in the front, all gonna come off the bike together. It's gonna be a runner's race. And anyways, I was able to fall back asleep. And then I woke up again to take another pee an hour later. And I saw 106.30. And my heart sunk into the bottom of my chest, into my, my whatever, my intestines. And I literally could not sleep for the remainder of the night. I thought to myself, 106.30, absolutely amazing, probably the most amazing performance that's ever been done in triathlon. And I said to Aaron, I said, I actually cried a couple times because I said, I don't know what to do. This guy is coming to this race in the absolute best shape that any human being has ever been in. And what can I do? I just want to give the guy a run for his money. I just want to be part of it. And I said, I can't stay here. I can't, I can't just sit here and not be part of this. I need to do everything to the best of my ability. And so we stewed on it, went to the wedding that night. And then basically Aaron said to me, why don't we go to Kona? Why don't we go early? Train on the course, become one with the course, learn the ins and outs of the conditions, make sure your, your nutrition and everything is all on point. Lionel, Hawaiian News Network, did you change your fit? Water party. Didn't want to have a code brown today. I started training with Corey Belmont, which, uh, well, he was he was at that test section. Uh, actually, that was that was the first time we we ran together and did a quality session. And <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of quality with him, and it's just uh, shown me how I guess I mean the reality is 
how not hard I've been I've been working my run I've I think we're deeply uh, social beings and um, I've been training lone wolf for a long time now and the reality is you just can't you can't reach the limits on your own and you're always probably 10% from what you're capable of 10% shy of what you're capable of without the help of others so the run and, and having Corey here as well he's a great swimmer um, he's really been pushing me on my swim too so next year and this is something I learned being here uh, next year I'll definitely have a training partner hopefully in all three disciplines uh, today uh, well to put it into perspective yesterday was a hard bike workout three three hours and five minutes ended up averaging with the warm-up cool down and recovery 310 watts then we ran 15k in the heat of the day off the bike uh, one of the big things I'm really working on is listening to my internal cues and that's another thing that I've learned is you'll run your best when you keep your heart rate as steady as possible especially in these conditions and so you got to really ease up on the uphills uh, because my old tendency is to push the ups and that's a big no-no because that heart rate spikes and then each time it doesn't come down as much and then suddenly you get past the point of no return and that heart rate does not come down and you you will not cool until you go into air conditioning because you're just you're basically sitting in you know a sauna um, so so I mean that's that's one of the things I learned so that was yesterday hard swim as well and then today we had a 90 minute bike this morning moderate intensity uh, and then 4500 yard swim quality main set was uh, eight times through 100 at kind of takeout speed to 200 crews basically eight times simulating the start of the race Oh, football. The it's life cool. of runners, eh? Cool. Hey? Like, life of runners. Like We're always second rate. Last two second rate runners. No runners allowed. Football time. Yeah, whatever, bro. Should we asked like whatever. 20 people where the wash went. Uh, today's plan is to run 1K out, 1K back for a 2K. As you can see, uh, no shade or nothing uh, other than what we're standing in here. So, nice, nice uh, Kona type prep. And uh, later in the day, it's 10 after 4, so not too, too hot. Still the sun's out. We did those hard Ks earlier in the week, 8 by a K on the track. So this one's more of a threshold workout. Uh, Corey's going to do his first ever start off controlled on the first 2K. This is going to be very difficult. In fact, I'm going to tie a leash to him. <laughs> and it's only going to go about 10 meters ahead. So... Uh, the leash will hold me, I'm not then, too sweaty. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then he's going to descend and I'm going to just try and keep him even. I don't have that problem with going out too hot. I got rid of that back in the college days. <laughs> Good? Three, two, one. Well done. How'd it go? Well done. That had the highs, the lows, yep. hit everything. 
Uh, he went, I had the heat. I mean, for me, this is the best running I've, I've, I've done in, since 2013, really. I mean, I, Corey and I got to train together more. I mean, I don't know what he's getting out of this. I, I'm just slogging behind him, but um, I, this is taking my running to a new level. I totally understand how Jan's doing 106.30 off the bike. I mean, he must be training like this. That's all there is to it. So, uh, something for next year, absolutely. I just, I just started, we just started training together. Um, and anyways, I went uh, 5.56, six flat, uh, 6.04, 6.08, and then 6.01 for the two Ks on three minutes rest. So, uh, for me, I haven't done that kind of quality in a long time, and, and Corey's the one to blame for that. So, uh, uh, lessons learned, I'm excited for next year. I'm already excited for next year. Yeah, you know me, I always try and keep it fresh, keep it new. And so uh, all the things that I changed this year, I've thrown them all back out the window with two weeks to go and got back on a medium frame, changed all the components again. Um, interestingly, I almost succumbed to second place syndrome. Um, I tried to tear everything apart. You know, you see me change my diet, change to a small frame, change all these things. The reality is I lost by half a percent last year. And, and that tends to be the thing when you, when you almost achieve your life goal is you want to change everything, tear everything apart. And I almost fell victim to it. The reality is if I just executed the exact same swim, the exact same bike, and just closed those final, even the final 10 miles, you know, three minutes faster, let's say, than last year. That was the win. So what are you trying to change everything for? Just do what you need to do to close those final 13 miles better. And so that's, that's what I've learned. And, and, uh, and fortunately, I, I think I caught that in time and I feel so much more powerful going back to the medium frame. Um, and, and more comp I mean, it w admittedly, the, the small frame was quite comfortable, but I was so far back in order to fit on the small frame, I was losing power. And once again, here we go, testament to, uh, to defeat Montremont was the nail in the coffin in that I analyzed my previous five races and they were all lifetime worst power outputs on the bike and I've done these races multiple times. And so at some point you have to say, well, maybe you're not adapting to the position. Maybe that position actually is less powerful. And so fortunately I caught this and fortunately I've made the switch I think with enough time. And, uh, and that's the lesson. Don't succumb to second place syndrome.